Well, hello there, my math friends. How are you doing today? <clears throat> I hope you're having a great day. It's always a great day when we do math. Today, we're going to be doing the more advanced version of multiplication. And this type of a problem is called double digit by double digit multiplication. However, we are still going to use the same format that we did the last time. This time though, we're gonna use three models instead of four. So I hope you're excited about this lesson. I know I am. And we've got our favorite puppy here ready to help us learn these skills. He's got his glasses on, he's got his book and pencil ready, and I hope you do too. Let's begin. So today's math problem is going to be multiplying 62 by the number 45. So I'd like to ask you right now to, to pause this video and let's see what answer you come up with using the skills that your teacher has taught you. I know you're gonna do a great job. Check back with me in just a minute and we'll see if you got the right answer. Have fun. So how do you think you did? Do you think you got 100%? Well, let's find out. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to multiply 62 by 45 using the standard method which I call cross multiplication because that's what you're going to be doing. And that's a nice simple reminder that I'm gonna be cross multiplying my ones place first and then I'm gonna multiply by my tens place second. There's two different methods that you could use in order to use the standard method. This is the method that we use, um, the distributive property kind of. We decompose some numbers and then we add those partial products together. So it's just different ways of looking at it. Um, but using the expanded form of a number is always an easy way if you don't know how to do um, the regular cross multiplication method using the double digits. This here is also a nice way. This is a nice template that you could use. Um, a template is just um, like squares or things all lined up for you that help to remind you where you put your numbers. Notice the zero right now is reserving the ones place. It's, it's a place marker. And so it makes you aware, oh yeah, I need to put a zero before I start to multiply my tens place, my 10 place by the ones place in the tens place, which these numbers would allow for. So anyways, um, whatever method is the best way, either way is gonna get you the right answer if you follow the steps correctly. So let's go ahead and begin. So what I thought I would do is, I thought I would use a different color for different processes. So I'll use red um, just so it stands out as I do this. So as you remember, I just mentioned that I'm going to take 45 and I'm going to use the expanded form of it or decompose the number, whatever you want to call it. So if I do the expanded form of 45, it would be 40 plus 5 equals 45. Well, I know because I've learned um, some lessons about multiplying with zero that it's really easy. You just don't multiply the zero to the very end or don't add the zero to the very end. So it would be just a matter of saying, well, what's two times four? And what's the answer to that? You're right, it's eight. You put that in the ones place and then you say to yourself, what's six times four? And what's the answer to that? Did you say 24? Nice job. Just make sure you put it in the correct place place on the place value chart. And then what do I do with that zero? As you can see, I made myself a little reminder. I, I added an arrow down. Yes, I have to add that zero on. So what is 62 times 40? 62 times 40 is 2,480. Nice. Now we're going to do the same thing to our five. So we're going to say what's two times five? And what's the answer to that? Did you say 10? That's correct. Now, if you forget this, you can also do it this way and put 10 here and say to yourself, can I put 10 in the ones place? And the answer is no, you cannot put 10 in the ones place, but you can take the zero down, put the zero in the ones place, and then you can take this, this one stick, one ten stick and drop it off in the tens place because that's where it belongs. And you're gonna add that after you multiply, just like we did before. What is five times six? And the answer is what? Did you say 30? Nice job. What's 30 plus 1? Did you say 31? Yes, you did. Awesome job. So I put my 31 down. So I have 310 and 2,480. And what am I supposed to do with those two partial products? You can see I'm supposed to add them. So let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. 
Okay, so I'm going to add in black. I'm just going to go ahead and write it down here. So 24, 80. Hopefully you're looking at some numbers that look familiar to what you did too. Added by 310. So these are my add-ins. What do we call the answer to an addition problem? Did you say sum? If you did, you're right. So what's zero plus zero? Did you say zero? Nice job. That is the answer. So zero. What's eight plus one? Did you say nine? Good job. And what's four plus three? Did you say seven? You're awesome. That's the right answer. And what's two plus zero? Of course it's two. So we go one, two, three, and that tells us where to put our comma. And our comma represents the word thousand. So I would say 2,790. Is that what you got? If so, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't quite get the answer in the time that I needed you to have an answer sideways thumbs, if you got the wrong answer, thumbs down. And that's a little self-reflection to you, how you're doing with these skills. So now I'm gonna put my answer over here underneath my problem, now that I got it. Now, if we don't know if it's the right answer, you can put it here and then use a different method to check your answer. So we're going to go ahead and try this different um, type of a problem. I'll be using Red Ink for this. Again, it's just the same method, but it's using a different way. Okay, so here we go. What's 2 times 5? I'm going to start in the ones place. It's 10, isn't it? So if you need to, you can go ahead and draw this out if this helps you. So you're going to put the 0 in the ones place, and you're going to carry the, the one over to the tens place and add one to whatever it is that your ones times your tens equals. Okay, cross multiply again. What's five times six and the answer is? Did you say 30? Yes, you did. So I put 30 here. So what's 30 plus one? And of course it's 31. So I just put the three there and the one here. Now what I thought I would do, I know when I was going to school, my teacher always told me to erase what I just did so I don't make a mess out of my problem, or you can just use different ink. But for purposes of today, I just don't want to confuse anybody. So I'm going to go, to, go ahead and erase everything that I just did um, in reference to the ones place. Now the ones place is already figured up, so now I'm going to go to the tens place. So maybe I'll use some green ink, just so it doesn't show up um, red again. So this time I'm, I'm going to mark it with a zero because I'm now, see this is the z, this is the ones place, mark it with a zero, and now we're in the tens place multiplying um, using cross multiplication methods. So I'm going to go four times two. What is four times two? Four times two is what, eight? Yes, it is. And then we're going to go up above. Tens place times tens place. So what's four times six? And the answer is what, 24? Yes, it is. So on this, this one, you're going to put 24 down here. You can see I didn't make an extra box for it, so you can just put the two off to the sides. So the four goes here, and the two goes here. So what's zero plus zero? And I'm going to use black ink for this. We all know what zero plus zero is, silly. It's zero. What's one plus eight? Did you say nine? Good job. What's three plus four? Did you say seven? Nice. And see, I'm lining it up right inside its place like I needed to. And what's two plus zero? It's two. Do you notice something about this number? 2,790. Did you say that it matches this here? Yes, you did. So that means we just checked our work and we got the right answer. Yay. Now let's try another model and see if we can get the answer 2,790 using a different strategy. Okay, so our next model, multiplication math model, is using the distributive property of multiplication. And maybe some of you say this is your favorite. It's a good one. <clears throat> so when using the distributive property of multiplication to multiply two digit numbers by two digit numbers, the best thing to do is to remember to underline the first, underline the first um, double digit number 62 times. We're not going to do anything with that one. 
we're going to expand or decompose the number 45. And 45 will turn into 40 plus 5. Everybody remember that from when we just learned this previously, when we did like three digits by one digits, we used the same format, didn't we? So now what are we going to do? Do you remember? What's the next step? Did you say put 62 times in each of these parentheses? If so, you're right. Also, something that I always tell my students is they'll say, well, how many parentheses do I need? And what I tell them is this. I say, well, how many circles do you see? And in this case, I see one circle, two circle. So what I like my students to think about is to take that circle with that number it and stretch it apart. And what does it look like when you stretch it? Did you say a parentheses, a set of parentheses? If you did, that's, that's what I think that it looks like. So it's really like taking this circle and stretching it apart. And inside that, you're going to put 62 times by 40. So I'm going to write that right here. 60, 2, times, so this doesn't change, this stays the same, that's why I colored it in green, 62 times 40. And then what do you think is going to go in our next parentheses? Did you say 62 times 5? If so, you're right. 62 times 5. What's our next step? What are we going to do? Are we just going to add these numbers together? No, because it says we're supposed to multiply them together. So 62 times 40, I'll just go ahead and do that over here in this margin that I have. And hopefully you took the time to do it this way too. Maybe when I asked you to solve it, maybe you naturally went to the distributive property because this makes sense. So if you didn't write this down before, hopefully you're following along with me in your spiral. You're doing the work with me because that's always the best way to learn is when we practice with our teacher. So now what do we do? Did you say multiply um, the ones places together? If so, that is correct. Remember, we just leave the zero off to the side. We're not going to do anything with it till the very end and then we pull it down, right? So what's two times four? Did you say eight? Yes, you did. Nice. If my little marker would work, that would even be better, huh? And then what's 6 times 4? Did you say 24? Yes, you did. Good job. Now what do we do? Bring down the 0. Good, so we have one of our partial products already. Now what do we need to do? Did you say multiply the other, partial, the other um, parentheses together to get a partial product? Yes, you did. So that's what we're going to do over here. 62 times by five. Now, if you don't know how, um, if you don't know your multiplication facts, then what should you do? Well, you could always do the tic-tac-toe math that I've used, I've shown you in other lessons, or you can just go ahead and use repeated addition to get that, right? Go to what you do know and then add on. So what's two times five? You said 10. And then you say to yourself, can I put the number 10 in the ones place? And the answer is no, but you can put the zero. So you're going to drop off the zero. And then what do I do with this one or this 10 stick? You're right, take it to the tens, tens place and drop off the 10 stick there. And you're going to be adding that. I am really having problems today with this. Okay, what is 6 times 5? Did you say 30? Yes, you did. So what's 30 plus 1? It's 31. Wow, well, what is going on? It's like delayed. Sorry, that does not look good, but I'm trying my best with what I've got to work with. Okay, now we're going to take our partial products and add them below. So I'm going to put 2,000 for... Hmm. Hundred and eighty plus three hundred and ten I think we're just going to add one place plus one place and put the answer here. You could also line it up vertically if you don't know how to add things horizontally, but just 
because of a time factor, let's just go ahead and add our ones place plus our one place and put it in the ones place here. Zero plus zero is what? Did you say zero? Good job. And what's eight plus one? Did you say nine? Yes, that's the answer. And what's four plus three? Did you say seven? Good job. And 2000 plus zero is what? 2000. Does this look familiar? 2,790, well, let's look and see if that reminds us of something that we've seen before, 2,790. Hey, we've seen that before, haven't we? So it must be the right answer. So I'm gonna write it up here for my product. Again, this is a partial product plus a partial product gives you the product and it's the whole product. And that's what we're looking for. We got the right answer because we checked our work, which all good math students do. Okay. Last but not least, I'm going to ask you, because I know you're a pro at this by now, go ahead and solve this problem, 62 times by 45, using the area model. So go ahead and stop the video, stop, and let's see if you know how to solve it the way I solve it, using what's called the area model or the array model. Okay, see you in just a minute. Bye-bye. Well, welcome back. Let's see if you got the right answer. Did you draw something that looks like a great big square? Did you draw a square with four squares inside a big square? If so, you are amazing. And you probably knew that because you counted your circles. One circle, two circles, three circles, four. One square, two squares, three squares, four. You have to draw as many squares as you see circles. Area model uses kind of the distributive property in, in the sense that we're going to decompose some numbers. I like to just say, let's expand these numbers because that's really what we're doing. So we're going to take 62 and expand it to 60 plus 2 equals 62. And we're going to take 45 and expand it to 40 plus 5 equals 45. You have to do that if you're going to use the area model. Again, this is the area model of multiplication. So what do you do next? Well, let's see if you know what to do next. Did you take 60 and drop it off here on this line like this? If you did, you're awesome. What did you put on this line? Did you put the two? If so, you're amazing. What did you put on this line? Did you put the 40 down here? I hope so, because that's the right answer. What about with this number five? Did you know to put it right here? I'm sure you did, because you're awesome at math. Now what do you do? Well, just look at the symbol here. It's time to multiply, isn't it? So you're gonna take 40 times 60, but we stop and we say to yourself, don't multiply with zeros. Take the zeros off and add them at the end. That's what all good math students do. So what is four times six? By now we should know it's 24. Is that the answer? Is 40 times 60, 24? No, because we need to count our zeros. There's one, there's two. So I'm gonna add two zeros. So 40 times 60 is 2,400 or 2,400. Now we're gonna take 40 times two. So what's four times two? Did you say eight? Yes, you did. How many zeros did we have? Well, I just see one. So 40 times two is 80. Now let's do the squares below it. What's five times 60? Well, take the zero off and say to yourself, what's five times 60? And the answer is 30. Good. Now what do I do? Don't forget the zero. So you're gonna add the zero on. So five times 60 is 300. Now we're going to take what's five times two, and the answer, we all know this, is 10. Okay, now what's the next step? Okay, so we've multiplied. We've multiplied all this together. But if we look here, it looks like we're supposed to take the 60 plus two, these partial products, and add them together. So let's go ahead and do the same thing here because it says add, add whatever the, the products are. Add your partial products together. So that's what we're going to do next. So let me go ahead and just add green here. It says we're supposed to add these together. So let's add them together and get an answer. So let's go ahead and add the ones place to the ones place. So if you can't do it, you could also always go like this. Let's say that maybe you don't know how to add horizontally, then just change it and make it vertical. I'll do one of these for you just to show you that you can take this and add it horizontally or vertically. So what I'm doing is adding it vertically up and down. So what zero plus zero is zero. What zero plus eight is eight. 
What's four plus zero is four. And what's two plus zero, it's two. Did you get 2,480? If so, you're awesome. 2,480. Okay, what do we do next? Did you say add 300 plus 10? And please don't take and add 300 plus 10 uh, vertically because you can do that in your head. 300 plus 10 we know is 310. My suggestion though is line it up with the number above it. And then you can just add it vertically this way, this way, like using a place value chart. So what's zero plus zero is zero, good. What's eight plus one, did you say nine? Yes, you did, good job. What about four plus three, did you say seven? Yes, you did. Here, I'll just write this line really big. And what's two plus zero, did you say two? Uh-huh, you did. So you got the answer, 2,790. Wow, isn't math a lot of fun? So I guess by, by practicing using these different models, we're realizing, let's stop and do a reflection and analyze what we're really figuring out here using our critical thinking skills. Are we realizing that there's not just one way to do math? There's lots of ways to do math and get the same answer, boys and girls. That is an important thing to remember about math because you might think differently than your teacher or you might think differently than other students in your class. And that doesn't make you wrong and them right or them right and you wrong. It makes everybody right. If everybody gets the same answer, you're all doing it the right way. It's just different ways. That's what's so fun about math. Well, boys and girls, thank you for for tuning in today and watching this important math lesson about knowing how to multiply double digit by double digit because guess what you're going to use this skill for the rest of your life so anyways I'm, I'm glad that i had the opportunity to review those these important skills with you and until next time keep smiling and and remember that math rules Bye bye